Hi, this is Typhon, a two oscillator, single filter, analog monosynth from Dreadbox with digital effects from Sign Vibes. And it does quite a few things in an original way, both in terms of controls and in terms of price at under $400 or euros. It still has preset storage, excellent effects, and a very powerful mod matrix. In this video, I'll go over it in depth, check out its pros and cons, and cover a few patch ideas that make the most of it. Let's get started. Let's start with an overview. Typhon is a monosynth, meaning it can only play one note at a time, subject to note intervals between its two oscillators. However, it isn't monophonic, its effects and output are in stereo. Its build is very solid aluminum and everything feels like it sits well in its place. It has a high-res OLED screen viewable from any angle, but it is fairly small. The panel has eight controls that are knob per function, so you always know what they're going to do. Then there are five faders that control different things based on the tab or mode or screen you're on. The button on the right functions like a shift if you're on a tab or screen that has two different pages. So for example, if I turn on the amp controls, both the filter and amp envelope generators, if I press this button, it toggles between the VCF ADSR envelope and the amp ADSR envelope. In terms of modulation, like we just saw, it has two main envelopes, one for the VCA or level of the sound over time, and another to modulate the filter cutoff over time again. And then three other modulators, M1, M2, and M3, each of which can either be an LFO, an envelope generator, a random value generator with an interesting twist, or a value step sequencer with up to 32 steps. Aside from the modulators, Typhon has an additional 32 step note sequencer accessible on the panel directly by pressing the sequencer button. And then modulation aside, Typhon has three FX slots, FX1, 2, and 3, currently assigned to a set of distortion effects, which you can toggle through using this button, a set of modulation effects called enhancer with chorus, ensemble, flanger, and a set of reflection or space effects, mainly reverb and two types of delays. So I don't know if you call these tabs menu diving. I think they're pretty straightforward. That said, there is an additional menu with a few other options, which we will talk about later. Typhon can store the entire machine state as a preset, something you don't see in all analog synths, especially at this price range. And you've got four banks of 64 presets. You can load up presets from any one of these banks, A, B, C, and D. Each bank has up to 64 presets. It comes with about 100 presets, so you've got space for your own as well. And there's software that lets you back these presets up or import new presets. From a connectivity perspective, you have a 3.5 millimeter stereo headphone output, two quarter inch stereo line outputs left and right, obviously, and a monophonic 3.5 millimeter audio input for sending external audio into the filter and effects. There's no internal level control for this input, so you'll need to attenuate it externally. You've got proper five pin MIDI in and out, and the whole synth is powered via USB with any power source that can provide 500 milliamps or more. So that's the overview. Let's dive in. We'll start with the analog side and with the oscillators. Now on most dual oscillator synths, you see things like a wave shape control for each of the two oscillators, and then separate level controls for each, and if you're lucky, another knob for cross oscillator FM and for pulse width modulation of the square oscillator. Here, a single knob controls all six of those parameters at once. If we ignore the FM area for a bit, turning it clockwise takes oscillator two from triangle to saw, and oscillator one from square through variable pulses to pulse and then 
ultimately to a saw as well. So let's take a look and listen to these without the FM section to begin with. So we start with the triangle wave for oscillator two, then in comes oscillator one with a variable pulse. And the pulse extends again to a square. Oscillator two is now out of the picture and it slowly comes back in as a saw with the pulse of oscillator one changing again, then oscillator one fading out. This is just oscillator two as a saw, and then oscillator one comes back in as another saw. Now you can detune oscillator two up to two octaves up, and the nice thing about the way this detunes is that it starts with a subtle detune, and then goes up semitones all the way to an octave up where it again becomes a subtle detune then goes up again in quantized semitones all the way to two octaves up and this is of course across the shape range So that's what I mean by sort of five knobs in one. You've got the level for each of the two oscillators, the wave shape for each of the two oscillators, and then pulse width for oscillator one. Now the sixth element is this area over here, the FM element. So what this does is oscillator two starts as a lowly triangle and slowly fades out, bringing oscillator one as a square. And beyond this point is where oscillator two starts to modulate oscillator one. Now, if they're on the same octave, it sounds pretty peaceful, though harsher than a regular pulse. But as we change the relative pitch of oscillator two, the really nice analog FM craziness starts. and in steps along the way, the craziness either dies down or increases based on the relative tuning of the two oscillators. Now this may sound harsh at times, but if you bring in the reverb, and I'll admit everything sounds better with reverb, But there are some really nice sweet spots along this FM range. So those are the oscillators. Let's move on to the filter, take a listen to it. The filter is a 24 dB per octave low pass filter, four pole filter. 24 dB per octave means that it has a sharp slope, which is great for mono synths. This is what it sounds like without resonance. If you bring up resonance, it does reduce the bass a bit, but not by too much, not too painful. Yeah, you can start picking off the harmonics. It sounds very nice, of course, with reverb too, right? And it will self-oscillate. So that's the filter. You do have tracking for the filter. So you can play the filter if you want. It doesn't track precisely, but... Um, it does across a few octaves. Then the final important analog feature is filter FM, filter frequency modulation. This is hidden in the FX1 tab, in the digital effects tab, but it's actually an analog effect that takes the frequency of VCO2 or oscillator 2 and uses it to modulate the cutoff frequency of the filter. Now without resonance, this can be a fairly subtle effect, but as we increase resonance, the 
craziness ensues here as well. And the relative frequency between oscillator 2 and the filter cutoff matters as well. Here I've got the filter set to, uh, let's say, the, the frequency of oscillator 1. So as we increase this, I think the craziness can be a little bit more tame. Obviously, reverb doesn't hurt here, either. And as we open up the filter and choose different frequency ratios, And if you're willing to let the craziness really go far and just bring up resonance all the way so that this becomes its own oscillator, you might want to take the kids away for this one. Let's talk about the effects slots. Like I mentioned, Typhon has three effects slots, one for distortion, one for modulation or enhancer, and one for reflections or space. S-curve is a nice and simple game. Then there's tri-clip. Shred. And a bit crush. Big Crush is sort of like chops it up vertically. And Bitrate chops it up over time. Kind of like a down sampler. Yeah, there are plenty of nice things that can be done with this in musical contexts. So for example, driving a resonant filter into a distortion. I'll show you one more nice thing with this in the tips and tricks section. Modulation effects. Yeah, and we can obviously play with this a lot. There's a chorus, ensemble, the parameters here are similar on all of these, and a flanger. And then on the space or reflection effects, we heard the reverb before. Has damp control, feedback controls, size, pre delay. And the two other options are the delays. And stereo, which is Always nice. Let's damp this control here. And then there's a ping pong delay option. So that's Typhon in terms of course sound engines and effects, but synths need modulation and luckily there's plenty of that to go around here. Now this starts out like most synths with a DSR for each of the envelopes. So let's say that I wanted to control to add a little bit of decay to the filter envelope. This is the each level or modulation depth of the filter envelope. And there's also an envelope for the VCA or amplifier to control the overall sound contour. 
all this is pretty standard synth stuff. The nice thing is the amp envelope and filter envelope time modifiers. So this is the default state of the amp envelope, but I can shorten both the attack and the release times simultaneously just by turning this knob rather than moving both of these at the same time. And same goes for multiplying or extending them, making them extremely long if I wanted to. So this is a nice performance touch. I could obviously do this manually as well. Shorten both manually. This is a nice way to do everything at once. Same goes for the filter envelope. So these are my filter envelope parameters. Got a nice and short decay. And I can change that here as well. Make it even shorter or extend it. And if there was an attack and decay stage, rather than moving both of these at the same time, which would be tricky, I could shorten it, shorten both, or extend both with one fell swoop. So this is a really nice way to cut down on knobs and give a nice performance angle to both filter and amp envelope. Now eagle-eyed listeners may have heard that the mod depth is only positive. So what if I want bipolar or negative mod depth? Luckily we've got three modulators for that, M1, M2, and M3. Each one can have multiple destinations, which you can choose using this slider, but only one type or one source. So they're either an LFO, an envelope, bipolar envelope, by the way, a sample and hold LFO, a random LFO with a nice twist, which is a good thing that it's not with the other LFOs, and a 32-step or up to 32-step sequencer. Using these is pretty straightforward. If I wanted to modulate, say, the filter cutoff, I would just look for that here and increase the mod depth. It's either negative or positive, so the center point is zero. Then there are a few shapes, triangle, saw. If I wanted that to ramp, that's where I would invert its polarity. And there are a few other shapes. Square, short pulse, a trapezoid, and the chaos saw, which randomly generates saw waves at different amplitudes or level. A nice touch is that you've got either a fade in or fade out, so that you can either gradually fade the LFO in or gradually fade it out. That's a nice option, especially since currently you don't have the mod depth of a modulator as a destination. Hopefully that will change in the future. A few nice touches here. Mod depth changes if you're modulating pitch. So when I modulate the cutoff and other parameters, the range is from plus 100 to minus 100. But if I was to choose a melodic modulation destination to either the CV of both oscillators, oscillator 1 or oscillator 2, then the range would turn into plus 24, minus 24 in semitones. So that's an easy way once I get, let's get fade down to zero. And it would be nice if there was a shortcut to zero out parameters. Anyway, 24 semitones is two octaves. This is a nice way to modulate exactly across two octaves. If I move it down to 12, it'll be exactly a single octave and you can choose any other range that you like, which is a pretty nice touch. Let's briefly look at the modulation destinations. Like I mentioned, pitch of the oscillators and the waveform knob, cutoff of the filter, resonance, the filter envelope generator, the VCA, which is the level, FX1, that's the mix, the filter FM, FX2's mix parameter, the delays time parameter, FX3's mix, and that's it for now. Just to clarify, all of these destinations can be modulated in parallel. So I'm modulating the pitch here, but if I wanted to, I could say, use the same LFO to modulate uh, the mix of the reverb. And, uh, you know, anything else, filter FM. So that's a super powerful mod matrix right there, especially for a monosynth, and that was just the LFO. So we can change M1 
to be an envelope generator. And you've got three parameters here, attack, decay, and release, and sustain, as well as all the destinations that we saw before. So that's the envelope, and mod depth here is both positive and negative. So we mentioned that. Then there's the sample and hold LFO. Now I'll just zero out all the mess that I made before. And again, it would be nice if there was a shortcut to reset one or all of these parameters. Anyway, let's demonstrate this on pitch. So if I was to increase the mod depth of this sample and hold LFO or random LFO, so this sounds like your average random pitch LFO. But the nice thing about this is that it has probabilities, which means it won't change values every step, but rather, in this case, 67% of the time. And it also has a uh, slew parameter, which is always nice as well. So you could send this to multiple destinations as well. Let's just zero that out and move on to the last and fourth modulator type, which is the value step sequencer. Let's use this with pitch two, why not, across the two octave range. So right now it's set to four steps and you can increase the number of steps if you like, but let's keep it at four, sounds safe to me. And you edit the steps by moving this fader, step one, step two is at 30%, three is at 60%, then four is at 100%. And yeah, and as long as the overall mod depth is 24, then 100% level is two octaves. I guess it would be nice if, if the level indicator here would actually show you semitones. For your convenience, I've put on screen now what levels you should set to get semitone intervals, both at a mod depth of 24, which is less precise, but a larger range than a mod depth of 12. I've put both values on screen, like I mentioned, and I'll have this for download on my Patreon as well. Now, currently the LFOs don't sync to the overall tempo of the machine, but the step sequencer does. It would be nice if they added a ratio parameter here as well, meaning a time sync ratio for this step sequencer. So it could run say at twice or half the speed of the overall clock. Anyway, so those are the modulators. Now, aside from these, you also have a few controllers, both for expression controllers and for MIDI CCs, you reach them by pressing this button. And this is a good reminder for me to mention that you can have the LFOs either free running or the modulators either free running or synced to when you press a key. Anyway, back to this menu, you've got access to all of these sources to control, let's say for the mod wheel, for example, any one of the modulation destinations. Let's go again for what's audible. Let's say filter cutoff, press this, increase mod depth. And then once you set that, then the mod wheel will control filter cutoff. I could say assign aftertouch to, let's say both the filter cutoff. And um, let's also assign it to the pitch of the oscillators for fun. Semitone intervals again. And now we're both opening and closing the filter and controlling the pitch of the oscillators with aftertouch and with the mod wheel. So all of these parameters are accessible, velocity, CC2, which is nice because you could use an external controller as a macro for all of these parameters. And then while we're on the topic of CCs, a nice touch here is that you have a list of the MIDI CCs for all the parameters that can be controlled using external MIDI CC. So it's nice that you don't need to refer to the manual to figure out what those are. And oops, that triggered the sequencer. So I guess it's time to talk about the sequencer. So aside from the value step sequencer, which you can choose for one or all of the three modulators, you also have a note step sequencer in here. The sequencer has two pages, which you can toggle by pressing the toggle button, a page with overall parameters, how long it is, the division, the tempo division relative to the master tempo, and probabilities per steps as well as swing. And then once you've set the number of steps in your sequence, you can choose the pitch for each of the steps, the octave for the steps and the pitch in note values, which is great. There's a gate option, which ranges from arrest 
to a tie and then a velocity option, which works if you assign a destination to velocity in the controller menu we just saw. Yeah, you can just hit play and the sequence will run. Let's maybe slow it down. Probability at 100%, all the notes will play. If we lower it. You can hear the swing. And you can shorten the sequence length if you like. Or make it 32 steps. So that's how you program it using the on panel controls. You can also program sequences using an external MIDI keyboard. So for that, go into the sequencer, set the number of steps you want in your sequence, your sequence length, or just go ahead to step one and it will auto expand based on how many notes you enter. Then go to step one, which is all I have in this sequence. Then long press on this button, which will turn on record mode, and then enter your sequence. You can see it'll move forward as I move forward. I could change the gate length for the steps if I wanted, or velocity. And once I'm done, just click this again, hit play. That's my sequence. It has a relative speed, obviously. Then once the sequence is programmed, you can transpose it with the keyboard. Before we head out to the pros and cons, let's take a look at a few patch ideas. The external audio input patches into the filter and then gets passed on to the effects, which means that if you open up the VCA by either keeping a key held or by sending a high modulation to the VCA, you should be able to process any external audio. And there's actually a preset in here that does that. It comes on bank C, external in, you load it up. And if we cycle through the modulators, you can see that modulator three is set to one step level 100 VCA to 100. And you didn't think this radio was here for nothing. If we plug into its output and then plug it into the external input. And if I turn it on and I'm not gonna risk copyright infringement, so we'll just listen to noise for now. Then we can process this noise, say with a filter. And we just added an $8 noise generator to Typhon, if I didn't mention it. There's no noise generator here. And of course, we can add reverb to the mix. Anyway, so that's nice, but since there's no noise generator here, we can literally use this as a noise generator. I got level control here, right? And this just lives within whatever other articulation is going on in my sound. So now I'm free to shape it as I want with a nice noisy and gritty sound to go along with it. Now to take this concept even further beyond just noise, since this has MIDI out, you can connect it to an external synth or even your iPhone and bring in an entirely new oscillator alongside anything that's going on in here. And it doesn't even need to be a mono synth. You could use all the effects on a polyphonic synth on polyphonic audio coming in here. So this is only monophonic because the oscillators are monophonic. So while we're on that topic, let's move on to the next tip, which is a few ideas on making this non-monophonic. So if you take any arpeggiated pattern and drown it in enough reverb or delays, you can slowly turn it into a chord. Another way to make Typhon slightly less monophonic is to sequence each of its oscillators separately, effectively paraphonically. So what I have here is two simple modulation step sequences, not sequencer step sequences. 
M1 is a four-step sequencer modulating the pitch of oscillator one. So oscillator one just plays this pattern based on whatever levels that I defined in these steps using the semitone Excel file I mentioned earlier. And then modulator two is another sequencer modulating CV2, in this case, eight steps. And if I press a key, I'll still hear modulator one because we're only hearing oscillator one. If I move two, just listen to oscillator two. That's the sequence for oscillator two and I can listen to both together. Essentially playing two entirely separate sequences. The nice thing about this is that you can also transpose these sequences. And if you don't have an external arpeggiator to create the kind of chords in reverb that I mentioned before, then I'll just load up this preset. So in this preset, I've got a simple two note sequence playing for oscillator two and a simple different two note sequence playing for oscillator one. The result together is a minor chord and with the reverb, a transposable polyphonic minor chord. Okay, last little polyphony or paraphony trick, and I promise to stop with all this paraphony. So in this preset, I've got both oscillators set at a nice interval, and then I could bring in the resonance, just picking off a harmonic, not self-oscillating. And now I have an organ-style chord, and of course, changing the filter cutoff by picking off a different harmonic and sort of playing on the edge of resonance, I can create different chords. Filter tracking is, of course, set to 100 here. And by the way, since the filter is a low-pass filter, you generally want it as the middle or high note in your chord, because if you use it for the bass note, you'll likely filter out any high notes played by the oscillators. Another nice tip, I think, if you want to completely transform the synth into one that can synthesize vowels, you take a simple sound with resonance. Let's first listen to it without. And go into FX1 into the bit rate, the bit rate crusher. And this works just like a nice old sample and hold trick. If you crank up the bit rate crushing and the resonance, you can start to get these vowel-like sounds. And there's a nice preset here that has some vowel modulation madness. Here we go, this guy. Another neat little trick, delays can be powerful sound generators on their own. There's a nice preset here that shows that, so I'll just load it up. So the twang you're hearing is modulation targeting the delay time. Short delays can also be used to generate string or pluck-like sounds. Let's load up my init preset. So any noise or short brief sound that excites a very brief delay, let's get into the delays here and choose, let's say this delay is fine. Then go ahead and really shorten the delay times and bring it into the mix and maybe go even as far as just one to begin with on both sides. And as I increase feedback, you can see this rings out on its own tone, regardless of what I feed it. And then I can use damp to dampen this tone. And the different delay times in stereo will determine the frequency of this tone. This form of synthesis is called carpal strong. It's hard to get the exact pitch properly here, but it's certainly something you can have fun with. 
And then the final tip I have for you is to create your own init preset. There are a bunch of init presets here, but you might want to just customize your own. For example, I think that filter tracking should be on by default and it isn't in the factory presets. The slope or the cutoff of the filter is pretty sharp. So if you set the, f the cutoff frequency very low, then as you play higher, if filter tracking is on, you'll always hear the notes, but if filter tracking is off, then as you play higher, your notes will disappear. Again, as opposed to having filter tracking on. And while we're here, there's a glide parameter with legato control. So you can have it glide when you play legato, but not when you play each note individually. This also applies to the triggering of the filter and amp envelopes. Okay, so let's talk about the pros and cons. On the cons side, I've got a whole list of things and I'll tell you what they are, but frankly, they seem to pale in comparison to the value you get here. If Typhon was a more expensive synth, I'd be more reserved, but at this price point, this is a great sounding analog mono synth with fantastic effects and more modulation options than I've ever seen in this form factor. And yet still, what are those cons? I'll separate them into things in the hardware, which obviously can't change, and things in the firmware, which probably will. On the hardware side, my top three cons are, number one is that it's a bit disappointing that you can't process external audio without opening up the filter and VCA and impacting the sounds coming out of the analog side of the synth. It would have been nice to process anything alongside Typhon doing its own thing, rather than having the external source and the internal source share the same filter and VCA articulation. The second hardware gripe is that the screen isn't as wide as the faders. Ideally, it would have been directly above them too. Ultimately, you get used to it, but it would have been nice if it was just a one-to-one -one match between the size of the screen and the placement of the faders. I found this especially confusing on screens that have only three parameters as opposed to ones that have five where it's a bit more natural. I guess the solution is just to add a few more options on these two screens. The third thing on the hardware side is something that I have to admit didn't bother me at all, but you should be aware of compared at least to other mono synths, and that's having this main wave knob control so many parameters the level of oscillators, their shape and pulse width. It's not a problem and even an advantage if you just want to select oscillator one or just want to select oscillator two. But if you want to modulate this, then this sort of in between dead zone where you only hear one oscillator is a bit odd. Now you can limit yourself to just modulating in these zones, which is fine, but it would be nice if there was an option to have the knob gradually go through the different wave shapes without reducing their level. A few other things that would have been nice here is hard sync and a built-in noise generator. I'm assuming that can be added in digital as well. I don't mind if my noise generators are digital, as long as you could also digitally filter the noise because it would come in after the filter on the analog side. So that's it on the hardware side. On the software or updatable firmware side, I'd really like to be able to have a catch-up mode for the knobs and faders rather than the way they currently work, which is jump mode. So if you load up a preset, let's say I'll close the filter down, load up my init preset, filter is wide open, but the minute I touch the knob, it'll just jump to a closed position. It would be nice if the knob would gradually catch up to the filter position and if we saw both the preset value and the current value on screen. Another thing that would be nice is to somehow have a central mod matrix where you can see everything at once rather than digging in through the menus. So if I load up a nice preset and there are quite a few of those in here, let's say. So if I wanted to figure out what was going on here, I'd need to go into the modulators and then sort of sort of move this until I saw which parameter or parameters were being affected. It's not efficient. It would be nice if there was sort of like a central place where I could see all the modulations, especially if I wanted to see which controllers were active. I'd need to go into here, go through this menu and sort of go one by one, see if the mod wheel is doing anything. It would be nice if there was a central location for all of that. While we're on the mod matrix, it would be nice if the depth of the modulators was a destination on itself. So say if I had an LFO going on here, if I could control the depth of the LFO with the mod wheel, or maybe use one of the modulators as an envelope to control the depth of another one. 
It would also be nice to have a true paraphonic mode through MIDI. And then finally, I found that sometimes the, uh, the digital effects would clip. Um, in that case, I would just lower the VCO level. I don't know if that could be solved automatically with a compressor or something. So those are my cons. On the pros side, like I mentioned, there's quite a lot of value here, making Typhon very hard to resist. Its analog aspects sound great, especially with the FM options for oscillator one and for the filter. And the digital side not only sounds great, but seems like a platform that they can build on substantially. And being familiar with what Sign Vibes have done in the past on the software side, the potential here seems very promising. Finally, from a modulation perspective, Typhon is leaps and bounds above what's available in its peer group with an interface that I think is overall very clear and usable. So that's it for this review. If you want ideas on what to do with all the modulation options in this synth, check out my ever expanding book available to the people who support this channel on Patreon. Hit like if this was useful. Make sure you click the notification bell if you don't want to miss the next one. Thanks for watching.